Well, well, well. A few months ago, I made a video about how I didn't use full throttle on a go-around while flying a CTLS, link above. I remember saying to myself, let's hope I don't have to make another one of these videos again. Unfortunately, here I am, making another one of those videos. Again. Followers of my channel know that I have been renting an Aeropratt A22LS from Heavenbound Aviation in order to be ready to fly my A22 when it's delivered sometime in December. Having flown an ultralight for eight years, I was not exactly autopilot savvy. So, on this particular flight, I wanted to get used to the Dynon autopilot by using the altitude and heading control knobs to control my flight. Here I am turning towards Hoover Reservoir. On the way back, I decided to land at Chapman Memorial Field in Centerburg, Ohio. Six Charlie Mike was the home base for my Quicksilver for over six years, so I was very familiar with the field. Except, as it turns out, I really wasn't. My hangar buddy back then, Eric, kept a beautiful Mini Max he built at Chapman. Check out his channel, link in the description. One day he told me that he hit a dip very near the end of runway 27 on his takeoff run. It's a small depression, but it was enough to shake up the plane. Since I always touch down near the turnoff when landing my MX, I never experienced it myself. I experienced it big time on this flight. Here's my final approach to runway 27. I did touch down on the main gear, but just as the nose touched down, I hit a dip and was launched into the air, coming down nose wheel first. As you can see, after the landing, I had a lot of problems steering. Rudder control was very stiff, I was finally able to pull off the runway and check the damage. It looked fine. Turns out there was a very, very slight bend in the gear and it was rubbing against its mount just enough to require a lot of force to turn both the gear and the rudder. Luckily, the downtime was minimal and I was charged a very reasonable price for repair. So what were the chain of events that caused this incident? Normally, I would call a grass airstrip if I hadn't been there before or if recent weather was bad. But since I was based at Chapman for years and it had been dry for days, I didn't feel the need to call. More than likely, the airport manager may not have remembered the dip in the runway anyway. So this is sort of a half link in the chain. The next link was an ag plane that was also using the field. He was doing a lot of landings and low passes in both directions, not following any sort of established pattern, unfortunately. Instead of being preoccupied with his antics, I should have just said, not today, and continued on my merry way. I did not have to land at Chapman that day. The larger mistake was improper speed control on final. I should be around 60 miles an hour on final and 50 over the threshold. However, I am varying between 73 and 65 miles an hour on final and was only down to 60 at the threshold. I touched down on the mains at 50 instead of the normal 35 to 40 miles an hour. If I had touched down at the proper speed, the plane probably would not have launched into the air, or at least not enough to cause me to come down nose first. One good thing about this incident is that I kept on flying the plane even as I was bouncing around and having problems turning on the runway. The two major takeaways here are go around or abort if the situation is unusual in any way and strive for accurate speed control. Please help my channel by hitting the like button and subscribing. We're always learning. Happy landings!